Let me see you do it in the middle of my truck. Sure know how to shake it all right. Let me see you do it. I see you drive a light. What's wrong with you? It has nothing to do with what I'm about to say. Okay. Over the weekend in Britain, a politician named Paul Weston was arrested on suspicion of religious He was quoting Winston Churchill from his book, The River of War. Individual Muslims may show splendid qualities, but the influence of the Islamic religion paralyzes the social development of those who follow it. No stronger retrograde false exists in this world, and far from it being moribund, Islamism is a militant and proselytizing faith. So someone was offended. They called the police, and the chairman of the Liberty GB party was taken into custody and then released. Mr. Weston sees a double standard for Muslims and non-Muslims in the United Kingdom. They go out of their way not to arrest anybody from the Islamic community, no matter what awfully dreadful things they get up to, but they will immediately arrest anybody uh, from the non-Muslim side of it who, who dares to raise his voice in protest about what's going on. And you know, the reason they do this is because if they have to admit that there is a serious problem with Islam, then they would have to do something about it. So Winston Churchill right. wrote that in 1899 when he was 25 during his time in Sudan. And Greg, in the UK, free speech is curtailed to the point that if two people are in a pub and somebody overhears them and they think that they've heard racial, racial comments harassment, they can actually call the police and those two people could be arrested. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the Western priorities right now are a funhouse mirror where a radical imam has more respect than a man who probably saved Western, the Western world. The fact is now Churchill is seen as another dead white male uh, and probably racist. The danger in limiting speech, though, like in a pub, is you decrease options for outrage, which then increases likelihood for violence mm -hmm. in other ways because people feel wow. frustrated. I think that England, what they should do is they should create a Reed Churchill Day. Everyone on a certain day, go outside and read Churchill. You can't sentence 100,000 people for completing a sentence. It's impossible. That's what they should do. Like Robbie Burns night. Exactly. Ah, Don't I know like what that it. is? I like it. Poet. Oh, okay. okay. Um, Kimberly, <laughs> yeah. let me ask you this. Police here in the United States, I don't think this would ever happen because we have the First Amendment, and for now, it is protected. <laughs> but I don't think, we don't for have now. enough police. For now. Would we even have enough police that would, to, to rush to a call to talk, check in on somebody's private comments? Yes, 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 yes. We already have that division, the Thought Police. They are doing extremely well and coming in under budget. Uh, yeah, this is frightening, and anybody with some two cents, basically, in uh, London knows that this is a big problem for the UK. They have a real serious threat, and it's where we're headed, by the way, of Islamic terrorism. And now you can't even say anything about it because the guy's right. If you say anything about it, then you're going to have to act on it, and they don't want to have to do that. They'd rather be PC, act in ignorance, and then stigmatize a guy like this that's just quoting Churchill. I mean, have you ever heard of anything so ridiculous as arresting someone for reading a quote? No. Uh, but one, he was trying to get arrested. I think, yeah, I do think that he, was, he wanted to be able to make this point. Do you and, kind of admire I, him for that? Yeah, I do. I really do. And in fact, I just want to quote here Daniel Hartman, who's the author of a book called How We Invented Freedom wrote in a British newspaper, The Telegraph, he says, why should it fall yes. to me to defend him? Where are the lion-hearted liberals right. who are so quick to denounce political arrest in distant dictatorships? No. Well, this, to me, what he was reading is not just a matter of intellectual curiosity, mm -hmm. and, which I am all for. Yeah. It also has relevance to who we are today in a multicultural, multi-religious society where you have to discuss the history of Islam and, and you have to deal with negatives just as we deal with the negatives of my faith Christianity. I don't see what's so crazy about that, why you can't have a public discussion. What do you make of all of this? Would you, would you want to go to England right now and risk it? Um, I, I, no, I don't think. Uh, here's what I think of it. I think the, that's the beauty of the Constitution. As simple as it is, it's you know, a few pages, and we can always rely on it. We can go back to it. Um, this obviously wouldn't happen here, I, I, I assume, because of the free speech. And Except then, on campus. And then, or, <laughs> or if someone ta audio tapes you in the privacy of your, your yeah. own home, and then all of a sudden your basketball team is taken away from you. Listen, I'm not condoning what that guy said, but you really have to wonder when a private conversation is being used against there you. There is no privacy. It, there is, it, well, is, is there no privacy, or, or is the Constitution being shredded on a daily basis, or at least tested on a daily basis? So many tests. Here, that would be a test of the Constitution. It wouldn't happen here. 
Um, they're telling me to shut up. So, I'll so just you know, Peter, uh, my husband Peter has a British accent. He's he's from there, obviously. That's why he has the British accent. Um, <laughs> or so he. No, that's, what he that's what they all say. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a wrap. He's from Newark. Dana, I think he's. I, it's a good I, one then. <laughs> <laughs> but he was reading to me um, out loud from this Winston Churchill uh, biography. I don't know, a couple of months ago, and, and I was like, oh, you could just keep on reading. You could come over, Kimberly, and listen. Well, I thought we were going to do that swap. Well, no swapping. What, no. what is going I on? <laughs> I've been right, away oh, too long. That's terrible. You're the, she's the she meanest said, person. She said, I don't want the kid. She's the meanest person. America, she said, I don't want the kid. What uh -huh. are you going to just leave it out on the road? <laughs> yeah. What a monster are you? Uh -huh. You are a dangerous person. Small, evil okay. monster. Well, we've been talking about Clippers owner Don Sterling and his race remarks. There are some controversial. My baby.